Okay, so I finally found out how King Charles and Camilla are related to each other. And also as a bonus, how Princess Diana is related to both of them as well. So stay tuned. In this video, we're going to go through their family tree connections and common ancestors. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I untangle family trees. And also see how individuals we read about might have looked in real life by recreating their portraits. Lots more on my channel, thank you for watching. You can check out my merch and my shop and subscribe for more videos. This is their family tree, and they all connect to each other like a triangle. So Charles is related to Camilla, Camilla is related to Diana, and Diana is related to Charles in more than one way. This is Alice Edmundstone. She was a longtime mistress of Edward VII, and also Camilla's great-grandmother. So hopsnobbing with the royals isn't new to her family. This is Rosalind Shand, Camilla's mother. Rosalind's father was Roland Cubitt, third Baron Ashcombe, whose great-grandfather was Thomas Cubitt. He was a master builder who developed Belgravia Square and also the east end of Buckingham Palace. So the very balcony that Camilla stands on today. Let's start with Charles and Camilla. They share two common ancestors, Henry Cavendish, the second Duke of Newcastle in the 1600s, and then King James VI of Scotland and I of England in the 1500s. Starting with Henry Cavendish, he was a British politician, and his third child, Lady Margaret, and fifth child, Lady Catherine, are the ancestresses of Charles and Camilla. Lady Margaret was born in the 1600s and had a daughter, Henrietta. Her daughter, Margaret Bentinck, would begin the new century in the 1700s. She had William, who had Lord Charles, Moving into the 1800s, we have Charles the Priest, who was Cecilia Bozline's father. She was the grandmother to Queen Elizabeth II, as she had Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and then Queen Elizabeth herself. Then there's King Charles. So that's ten generations up from King Charles to Henry Cavendish. Through his other daughter, Lady Catherine, 11 generations down, we have Queen Camilla. So it's through her mother's grandfather's paternal line that goes up to Lady Catherine, so they would be ninth cousins once removed through here. However, that's through Queen Elizabeth's mother's line. Through her father's line, King George VI, we have to go up all the way through the kings of England to the first Stuart King, James VI of Scotland, and first of England. It was he who succeeded Elizabeth I. If you want to learn more and see the complete royal family tree of Elizabeth II and Charles's ancestors, I have a video explaining how all the monarchs from Queen Elizabeth to Henry VIII were related in my description. From Charles III to James, that's 12 generations up. James had seven children who survived birth, two of which lived to middle age. Elizabeth was his only surviving daughter, whose line produced the current royal family. And then James's second son, Charles, inherited the crown after his older brother died at 18. So you have King Charles I, who had King Charles II and James II. Charles II had a lot of mistresses and produced about 14 children with them. Unfortunately, he had no legitimate children with his queen, Catherine of Braganza, so his army of little soldiers were all illegitimate though they did receive titles to recognize their father. One of Charles II's aristocratic mistresses was Louise de Guerroye, and they had Charles Lennox, the first Duke of Richmond. With his other mistress, Barbara Villiers, they had Henry Fitzroy, but we'll get to him shortly. Charles Lennox had two children, Lady Anne and Charles II, Duke of Richmond. They are the grandchildren of Charles II. The granddaughter, Lady Anne, had two children, a boy and a girl. The girl went down to Princess Diana, and the boy went down to Camilla. So, great-grandson to the king, George, had William, who married into Henry Cavendish's line to produce Camilla. So, Camilla is 12 generations down from King James. So, by that, Camilla and Charles are 11th cousins through the Stuart king. Now, I did say Charles II's granddaughter, Lady Anne, also had a girl, Lady Elizabeth Keppel. Her line goes down to Princess Diana seven generations later. So through Lady Anne, her son George, and daughter Lady Elizabeth connect Camilla and Diana. 
They are both 8th generations down from Lady Anne, making them 7th cousins. Not only are they connected to Lady Anne, but they are also connected to her father, the illegitimate son, Charles Lennox, the first duke, because he had another son. This son became the second duke, and he was the brother to Lady Anne. His line goes down to Princess Diana as well. You see, Lady Anne's great-great-great-grandson through her daughter and the second duke's great-great-great-granddaughter, Mary, in the mid-1800s. Rosalind and James were their names. They were fourth cousins, and they produced Princess Diana's paternal grandmother, Lady Cynthia Hamilton. So through Princess Diana's connection to Charles, the second Duke of Richmond, she and Camilla are eighth cousins, both being exactly nine generations down from the first Duke, Charles Lennox. Camilla and Diana are again connected for a third time to the first Duke's father, the King, Charles II. Through his other mistress, Barbara Villiers, they had Henry Fitzroy. Henry Fitzroy's granddaughter, Lady Isabella, married Francis Seymour Conway, which is interesting because as a Seymour, yes, he is connected to Jane Seymour, Henry VIII's third wife. She, you see, was his seventh time's great aunt. Anyways, moving on in history, Seymour and Fitzroy have Lord Hugh. He married Lady Anne Waldgrave. We'll get to her afterwards. Let's just continue. They have Horace, Adelaide, Charles, Albert, Edward, and then Princess Diana. So Princess Diana, through this pink line of Henry Fitzroy, makes her King Charles II's eighth great-granddaughter. And that's the same with Camilla. She is also an eighth great-granddaughter of King Charles II, making them ninth cousins through the king. Lastly, there is a fourth connection that makes Camilla and Diana related, and that's through Lady Anne Waldgrave in the 1700s, who married Hugh Seymour. Lady Anne in the blue is the great-great-granddaughter to King James II. So, after King Charles II died, the crown went to his younger brother James, who became King James II. So through her, Diana's paternal great-great-great-great-grandmother, She's connected to Charles I through his second son, and ultimately both of his sons. This last connection makes Diana and Camilla 10th cousins to King Charles I. You might notice a little bit of a square with Diana's ancestry, because both of her grandparents are related to each other through the two sons of King Charles II. Yes, Diana is her own cousin. She is her own ninth cousin twice over. And through King Charles I, her own 10th cousin, three times over. Finally, let's see how King Charles and the Princess Diana are related to each other through James the Sixth and the First. Through the line of Lady Anne and her father, they are 11th cousins. Through Lady Anne's brother, the second duke, they are 11th cousins. Through Charles II's other son, Henry Fitzroy, they are 11th cousins again. Then, lastly, by King James II, they are, once more, 11th cousins. Ultimately, this makes them 11th cousins four times over through James the Sixth and First. And I think that pretty much covers it all. The historical and genealogical significance of these several lines, going back to James and Charles II, is great. Not only for Prince William, who someday will be the first king to descend from Charles II, but he will also be the first descendant of Charles I to reign over Britain since 1714. And there's probably more undiscovered connections through King James that we have yet to figure out between these three. This is just the icing on the cake, so thank you for watching. Check this video out on Queen Elizabeth's ancestry and how the monarchs are all connected. I have separate videos on Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's paternal and maternal cousins to see who their extended family members are and how they're connected to the royals. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more recreations and family trees. Each of your subscriptions is of this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I will see you in the next one.